What is up YouTube, back in the garage. So last video, we got the engine back in, got some of this stuff on the driver's side back in, brake booster, clutch master cylinder, all my brake lines are in. Now today I'm gonna to be working on the passenger side um, on the coolant system. So to start off here, my radiator support is gone and I have made this uh, radiator support uh, in place of that. So um, that's what we're gonna be basing everything around today. And I started playing around with these hood latches here. I made a, some brackets to go underneath, but nothing's finalized there yet. Just kind of messing around. What I did here to make the video a little bit more enjoyable, possibly, um, I went ahead and got everything all fitted up and ready to go. That way um, I could just install it, show you guys what I did and keep it interesting. So first thing here, uh, we got a Moroso uh, expansion tank. The stock RX-80 expansion tank could be used uh, the heater core routing will be slightly different, but um, I got this one because it only has two exits and then the uh, this little bleeder pressure release uh, hose there. So what I did here was actually go ahead and rivet nut the firewall uh, to get this thing mounted up. So we'll go ahead and get that bolted in. If you're not aware of what the expansion tank's for, I'm using a stock version of the RX-8 radiator, which doesn't have a cap on it. That is because the radiator sits lower than the engine with the stock rotary. So if it's not at the highest point, you can't put the cap and fill it there because it won't bleed. Um, so whenever you're mounting the expansion tank, you want the cap to be up higher than the tallest point of the engine or the tallest um, or the highest point of where coolant flows through the engine. So. Um, where I'm at here, I'm up above, uh, which means I can fill it and bleed it back here, no problem, and not have any issues. All right, so next thing here, um, I'm going to be running heater core hoses. And if you can tell, they're going to be running right over my header here. So uh, what I did, I got some heat wrap. Uh, it's like a fiberglass braided heat wrap. Um, and went ahead and put that over them just to help protect it. Probably will still get hotter than they should, um, but I'm hoping it, it just uh, holds off the heat a little bit. What I got here are just basically, um, they call them LS swap heater core lines. It's just a 90, uh, three quarter inch, and I believe a five eighths, I could be wrong. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up these uh, first heater core lines to the engine. The front one is the inlet to the water pump or to the engine, and this inside or back one is the outlet. All right, guys, so I made the mistake of filming a time lapse while I was explaining something. What I was basically explaining in this clip is that you want to route your heater core hoses correctly. The inlet to your heater core inside of the car should be the bottom. So just to, to make the connection here, the outlet of your water pump heater core should go to the bottom of your heater core in the car. I believe the right one, the one that I'm pointing to in the screenshot, is the bottom one. From the outside in the engine bay, it looks like it's above the other one, but if you look inside of the car underneath the dash, that one actually enters the bottom of your heater core. You want your coolant entering the bottom, and that'll help bleed it. If you have your coolant entering from the top, it could create air pockets in there, and ultimately your heater core could have a huge air pocket in it if you do it that way. So. Uh, it just makes it easier to bleed and prevents any issues uh, later on down the road. Okay, so now that you have the inlet running to the upper heater core hose, outlet running to the lower heater core hose, this is where your inlet to the engine actually splits off to your expansion tank. Basically allows for um, coolant to go up into your expansion tank if it gets too hot and expands and the volume increases. So that's basically all it is. It's gonna split off, go into the bottom of our expansion tank, and then this hose here is gonna reach the whole way around to our top nipple on the radiator. So what I've actually done here is this top hose. I actually ran it up into the, this uh, little pocket in here, um, and then it comes out up at the front here. So this will run the whole way underneath and be hidden uh, from, from the back to the front. 
Okay, so there is the final look of the passenger side uh, heater core hoses. Um, I think it gives it a nice clean look. So that is all officially sealed up, uh, finally assembled. I uh, will probably just put a little hose in there and drop that down. Um, little side side trek here. Um, found a good uh, swipe on Marketplace, I think. I'm gonna just kind of take a shot and go grab it. Um, cool little piece, I'll show you when I get there. So I picked up this one Sparco seat. Uh, it is pretty rough. Got some rips. Got some dog hairs. I'm gonna see if I can freshen it up a little bit. I will say um, I bought it. I, I fit a little bit tight in it. The width is a little tight. I got it cheap enough that I wanted to still get it and clean it up and try to restore it, I guess. I don't know if it'll go in the RX-8 yet. All right, guys, now back to what we were working on before, the RX-8 cooling system. We got a Coilrad radiator. This is a RX-8 radiator. I already have a shroud with fans on it. So that's what I'm putting in here. I'm gonna be placing the radiator vertical, which isn't how it normally mounts. Kind of just preference. You could still mount it angled like the factory, but for me, I just uh, envisioned a vertical radiator, so that's what I did. These brackets here are the original lower radiator supports, and they originally were, they had like a curve in them. I actually just flattened them um, and then bolted them up. Uh, it's just gonna be held in by one bolt here on the lower part of where the bash bar mounts, um, and I'm gonna use those to basically mount the radiator in at the bottom, so. Uh, that's that's what I'm gonna do there and then I just got these two little tabs up here to bolt the radiator in so the first thing I want to do here before I put the radiator in I'm gonna take the shroud back off and that is because I have this nice gap the whole way around it um, that I'd like to seal up to create the best airflow through the radi radiator um, and I'm gonna be using this uh, this weather seal um, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work but I'm gonna try it. It should compress enough to get it into the tight areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And there you have it, all sealed up. Um, not thinking any air is getting past there. So uh, pretty tight in there and should work out perfectly. All right, so now that we got the foam in there, um, the shroud's all sealed up. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Right, guys so the cooling system is basically done uh, all I'm gonna do last is run this top line from my expansion tank which is a half inch line um, and basically tee it off into the top of the radiator and then to my steam port so um, I'm waiting on a tee for that and then I can finish that up so um, I'm gonna just leave that tucked over there for now but there is the radiator all bolted up and that thing isn't going anywhere um it's gonna look sick so and as you can see we got some extra mounts there for something else that i'm hoping will be in one of the next couple videos so um, as we're finally assembling everything uh and we're wrapping it up um this is the final install so everything's going in but one last thing i'm going to do for this video is put in this rack uh, i really should have put that in before i got the radiator in but should still be plenty of room underneath there to get it in. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bolt that in. So I do have the bump steer kit 
uh, for the steering rack. I have Steven's kit from LS1RX8, um, so that'll be nice and easy to install whenever the time comes. Um, I don't want to install that right away because I might be doing some modifications to the knuckles, so we'll see if I end up installing that or working on those knuckles before I drop the car down. So I want to do one last thing before I end this video off. This seat that I got, the Sparco seat, I'm debating how much time I want to spend on it. And until I know if I want to use it or not, um, I won't know how much time I want to spend on it. So as I said, it's really rough. It's also a little tight, so I'm not completely sold on it yet. Um, but what I want to do is take out that seat and just set this in there and see what it looks like because that will also help me make my decision on if I want to use it or not. So there it is in the car. Uh, like I said, it's cool. I don't mind the red on red, but uh, just a little bit tight down in the butt area. It's probably a size smaller than what I need. Um, it would probably work. I'd probably just get really sore. So, yeah, it's a bummer. I like the look of it in there. But it looks like I might be on the hunt for another seat. Anyways, got the cooling system together just besides this last steam port uh, up to this top nipple here. But um, it's it feels good to get everything sealed up and start getting this thing finally assembled. So we're gonna keep doing that next video, uh, finish up the oil system and possibly get this thing primed. Um, no promises though, cause I don't, I always end up working on something different than I planned. So <laughs> um, anyways, thank you guys for watching, like, comment, subscribe and have a good night. <laughs>